Hey, what's going on YouTube? I got a little surprise sneak video here on on this uh, on this Monday. Um, one of the subscribers reached out to me, wanted me to do a, a review on this company, Clearfield, uh, ticker CLFD. Um, shout out to Baby Prince eighty four UK. Um, so I hey, I listen, I listen to my audience, I listen to the people. So here we go. So little quick background I have not heard of this company so um, I did some due diligence and I did some digging and, and researched the company listen to conference call best presentation looked at the financials and, and did some brainstorming and, and so forth so um, I don't want people to take this as a I dedicated my whole life into into the due diligence uh, as I don't have like tens of thousands of dollars in the company but um, hey, I, I I did some due diligence here and, and looked into the company. So here we go. Let's let's take a look at, at what I got here. So Clearfield ticker CLFD. It's a four hundred and seventy two million dollar market cap. Um, from what I understand, they they do the fiber optics for the 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 five G fiber, and and they. They provide fiber to, to carriers that 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 get, um, that sell high speed 5G broadband internet to their customers and so forth. Um, so they're more of a like a picks and shovels play. Um, it's and they're not the actual carriers themselves selling straight to the consumer. So the be business to business. Um, business to business, uh, business model. All right. So they sell to, to other business. So their customers are other businesses such as AT&T, Verizon, suddenly Comcast, different and uh, all different types of carriers. And they're going international as well in their growth. All right. So, um, let's, let's dig into some things that I noticed about the company. All right. Well, straight to the, okay. So, their balance sheet they have a real strong balance sheet so i like that all right whenever whenever company has strong balance sheet i just already know like okay they're probably not going to go bankrupt or they're good to go they have net cash of over a hundred million dollars so that's uh that's their that's pretty good when i say net cash when a company's in a net cash position that means they have more cash than debt on the balance sheet so they can pay their debt off right away right unfortunately as we'll, we'll talk about later in this video a lot of their clients are not in that that same position all right so i think a lot of investors for clearfield probably know what i'm talking about or what i'm going to get into okay so um we'll go to the financials latest on the left so from a from a sneak peek as far as like just looking at it revenue growth looks strong all right um net income seeing a little bit of a little bit of weakness kind of but i did a little more digging at, at first glance when you look at the company you think to yourself it's undervalued but the devil's in the little details all right so let's go to the cash flow statement because this is this to me is the one of the most important things um, this is, so we're going to go down to levered free cash flow. So whenever you have your, your unlevered free cash flow, this is how much, um, money the, the company is making that, that is going to be dedicated to the investors to pay down debt, buy back stock, pay dividends, you know, um, et cetera, you know, so Unlevered free cash flow is the amount of money they'll have before they pay debt obligations such as net interest, minimum payments, and the levered free cash flow is how much they'll have after they um, they pay it. So they're the negative. So as far as the trailing 12 months for cash flow, let's go to quarterly. All right. So for quarterly, their their cash flow is is positive. Um, they made 1.4 million for the the quarter or what have you. So 
I mean, that's something to consider. I don't know if that trend's going to keep up to where they can maintain positive free cash flows. Um, so I looked through their earnings and <laughs> um, it's not looking too good. So here's some things that I've noticed about the earnings in, in this business model. Okay. So they're banking on this bead, um, this... <laughs> Well, let me let me specify what that is. This is broadband equity access and deployment program, which is funded through the government. It was a, I guess it was a bill that was passed through to to provide broadband to, I don't know, to poorer communities, if you will. Um, so and, and and it's more more of an infrastructure play um, by the government. Maybe just trying to update things, win votes or whatever. Um, so I want to <laughs> hear some things that that have been disclosed actually in this earnings that that the management is talking about. So this bead program, these carriers have to qualify for the program. All right. And as far as the funding disbursements through the states, they have to meet certain thresholds and how much they're willing to allocate. When I view this, I view this as more of a food stamps for the corporations, all right? So, and, and if what I mean by that is if you look at these companies, you look at their debt levels, like let's look at AT&T's debt levels. They have more debt than the company's worth. They're in a, they have 168, they have 168 billion worth of debt and only nine, a little less than 10 billion on uh, as cash. Verizon, they're, they're not really that different either. They got more debt than the company's worth. 182 billion. Comcast, there's, well, a little bit different. Comcast, maybe not as bad, but, but still, the debt level is crazy compared to their cash position. All right. Um, so I guess you can say that these companies do need food stamp equivalents in the corporate arena, all right? Or the equivalents in a corporate sense. Okay, so now here's the problem with the business model when I look at Clearfield. When I look at Clearfield, their customers are the AT&Ts, the Verizons, the Comcasts, and the other, other maybe the smaller players that uh, people haven't heard of, more localized, suddenly, and et cetera. A lot of these telecommunication companies have a lot of debt. Maybe it's the bit, I don't know if their business model is structured like that. Um, that's why I stay away. Typically I stay away from telecommunications um, companies. Um, I guess you can say that I'm bearish on the whole sector um, with the exception of maybe Starlink from Elon Musk that is probably poised to disrupt the whole sector but that's way down years from now i don't i don't see and i mean yes there's some deployment already from like starlink for cruise ships in rural areas but from what i understand they the um starlink tried to apply Let's cut that out with stat sorry about that so like the starlink uh, they tried to apply for this program, but didn't meet the threshold to, to qualify, if you will. Um, so, but that doesn't mean that they can't improve that later. All right. Um, okay. So, guidance is saying when this bead, this bead funding comes through, it'll it'll normalize the cadence of the deployments, as far as like deploying the the fiber and ins installation orders and all that good stuff all right um and and what i just talked about with uh, the problem with the business model as far as their customers i in fact i i believe management even yeah and management even um mentions this in their earnings even their um their ceo is saying so we think it's really prudent that these customers are looking at their balance sheets, that they are aggressively identifying opportunities. That's another way of saying, like to me, how I read that, that's another way of saying 
we're hoping that they're going to be able to meet capital allocations for capex to qualify for the bead program so that the the um the growth speeds up in these these different areas that qualify for this program um i'm, I'm gonna i mean i'm gonna be i'm gonna be honest i don't i don't think that i think a lot of these telecommunications uh companies are are not going to be able to qualify and i look at I look at eight. Let's like I go to like AT and T. Look at their cash flows, and I talked about this in another video of mine. When the interest rates are elevated, in fact, the Fed just announced that they're going to keep interest rates elevated throughout next year, all of 2024. I don't know if they're really going to do that, but if they are, I mean, that's there's some real pain to come. And I mean, let's look at let's look at the free cash flow for. Um, AT&T. All right. So you see how their levered free cash flow is the difference between the unlevered and the levered. All right. So if you look into all of these telecommunication 10Ks, you start digging into AT&T, Verizon, Comtas, um, different public company 10Ks that actually are carriers for these internets, um, internet services, if you will. Their free cash flows are going to get hit when those notes are due and they have to refinance on these upper um, higher interest rates, it's especially what happened with the uh, dollar general. You see, <laughs> you see dollar general that the stock just goes straight down. Yeah, pull up a just pull up a, a two year on dollar general and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. People ask, why is Clearfield like what? Like the stock, why is the stock going down for? for Clearfield, all right? So I'll tell you why, all right? If you go to earnings, next year, the consensus estimates are that they're gonna be declining in revenue, okay? And as we just looked at their their cash flow statement, they're pretty much like on a trailing 12 month, they're negative cash flow. They're not producing money, like as a free cash flow perspective, all right? All investments are the present value of future cash flows. All right. I'm not saying that that Clearfield is uninvestable because there is something to be said about their international expansion. Um, but right now, with these higher interest rates, we're seeing quarterly revenue declines and we're seeing profit and margin declines. So let me see there profitability their gross margin is 35 percent and their sector median is near 50 percent so margin compression margin compression uh estimated negative to flat growth moving forward for the next couple years um no f no free cash flow creation um that's why this dividend, or I'm sorry, that's not, that's why this, this stock is going down. Um, so is this an opportunity? If you, here's some, here's some good things that I, I noticed about the company. Their management is good. I like their CFO the best. I can see the CFO has really been doing a really good job. Um, I look at insider buying some of the, I think a director just bought bought a, a big uh, portion of shares not too long ago. So that's that's good to see. Um, and that's a little bit right after earnings once again. So um, that's that's a plus that that builds a little bit of confidence that one of their directors thinks it's an undervalued company. I think that is an opportunity. I will say that um, these government subsidies, I wouldn't look at them as like, oh, it's a cash cow. That's what's going to boost that. No, I, I look at the, the, the bead act and the government subsidies is just a, we're going to give you food stamps to get you through the tough times ahead to these, these, these companies like perhaps AT&T and, you know, Verizon, these internet carriers. So that, because they're so loaded with debt. All right. And maybe that's a, maybe that's, maybe a return on their investment for their um, 
how do you say political donations or whatever all right so good management team good balance sheet they have managed this company really good i just think they're in a bad sector um there are some there are some disruption risks um, later on in the future as far as like decades to go like I think suddenly may disrupt the whole telecommunications and internet business I think we'll still have cell phones but I don't think that there will be a need for my thesis is there won't be a need for actual actual like uh, call lines as far as like you pay for a, a, a phone number line with your your phone carrier or whatever you'll just we'll all just transition to to like internet based sudden link right to your cell phone and we just use apps and we just we get rid of that all right so um not completely but i think it will definitely play a, a factor in 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 long term years to come so i i can't see myself investing in this company um so but if if you believe in the management team one thing i i will not underestimate is the investment in people so um the ceo said they're investing in actual um in, in actual people to reduce labor costs and and they're investing in actual training and, and so forth so they can create value. I see this more of a, this can go back up because this is a cyclical, I see this as like a cyclical um, play. So let's look at the chart real quick. All right. You see that, you see here, this thing used to be 130. All right. Their revenues are kind of holding, okay. So once they get their free cat or once they get free cash flows back up and running and revenue starts to increase again, and mind you, I think that the well, I'm tracking the bead money won't come in until like around 2025 anyway, because they have to they have to go through then it's the government, nothing's fast, okay? All right, let's not kid ourselves. So I think the money's coming in. I'm tracking according to their conference call and the guidance they've been giving the money is supposed to be if you read between the lines it's coming in 2025 all right so if they return to normal levels of installations i can see this thing going back up to 100 bucks okay maybe 90 all right so maybe you get a maybe you get a 3x all right so i mean you you know you put 10 grand in and Maybe in 2027, it's 30,000 worth of stock value or whatever. The management will grow your your equity. I think that this company is uh, is primed to be. I think this company does have the potential to become something way bigger, though, if they set up into the and they, they keep if they keep investing in different products of the future and investing in people, they have a chance to to become a several billion market cap. All right, so as I digress, um, I think Clearfield is could be an opportunity. They got the potential to, to be a several billion dollar market cap um, several years from now. Um, so I hope you all enjoyed this review of, of Clearfield. Uh, shout out to all my subscribers. Um, like like um like and subscribe hit the bell notification um do a comment down there um i'm monitoring for these comments i'm looking for people asking questions and you know if y'all want me to to look into another company and you know tell you what i think let me know that too or if you want me to shift and talk about different things like different strategies and such um, like portfolio strategies how i view growth or value or, or what have you cash flows let me know in the comments below uh, with that being said hey hey uh, thank you all for your support I love y'all and I'll post another video later have a good have a good day and a good week